Well, welcome everybody to the Trustees of Osgood Hill uh, Committee meeting. Today's date is Tuesday, October 20th, 2020, which I would note is abbreviated 10-2020. Um, it is uh, 5.04. The meeting is uh, being held remotely by conference call, and I'm calling it to order as the chairman. I have a brief statement to read pursuant to the agenda and pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. General Laws, Section C-30A, Subsection 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Trustees of Osgood Hill will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and sl slash or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.northandoverma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so on their televisions by tuning to Comcast Channel 99 or Verizon Channel 28 or online at www.northandovercam.org. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately address the access, sorry, the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event we are unable to do so despite best efforts, we will post on the Town of North Andover website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. If the public would like to participate in public hearings, in this particular public hearing, please email your question or comment prior to or during the meeting to dbrown at northandoverma.gov, which is me. And I have my, I uh, will be checking that um, uh, email address throughout the meeting. A question or comment will be read during the proceedings and responded to accordingly. So we are in order. Uh, let me take a roll call. So we have um, Robin Ellington. Here. Very good. We have Jerry Justin. Here. Um, Dave Brown and I am here. And we have also with us um, Andrew Shapiro. Yes. Hello, Andrew. Hello. And our director, Joanna Colantine. Hello, Joanna. Hello. All right. And I think that's everybody that's on at the moment. I know that um, I'm, I am expecting Tom. I haven't heard otherwise. And, and uh, I know that uh, Jean let me know she would not be able to join till about 515 or 520. So uh, the first order of business is approval of previous minutes, which Jerry has distributed. So are there any comments on that? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So Mr. Chair, make a motion to approve the previous minutes from August 12th, August 26th, and September 15th. I second the motion. Okay, thank you, Robin. Um, I'll do a roll to see who's in favor. Uh, so Robin. Aye. And Jerry. Aye. And I, Dave Brown, say aye. So they are approved. I'm going to give a brief update. Um, so I think as everybody knows, um, so this is item three on the agenda, by the way. Um, as everybody knows, the select board met uh, and I had, as authorized by our committee here, uh, requested that we be able to, well, first of all, I submitted our written report that we prepared, our strategic document. And um, I requested to be able to have us presented at a select board meeting. Um, that uh, request was not uh, approved, accepted, whatever. Um, it wasn't expressly disapproved. And what happened is I had a conversation with the select board chair, which is Mr. Chris Noville. And he didn't say, well, well, I'll never let you do it. But effectively, he said it, it thought he believed for the moment it was best to for them, uh, that's the select board, to proceed uh, putting together uh, the, you know, their uh, RFP um, based on the long term committee's recommendations, the long term planning committee's recommendations, and that I was welcome if I so chose to 
uh, speak up during public input at that next board meeting, which was on, um, let me remember the date here. Um, give me one moment. So that would have been the 5th. Yes, that was on October 5th. So I did call in during public input and basically uh, read a statement that I can, uh, uh, Jerry, I think I actually have already sent it to you. I read that statement, uh, which we can uh, put in the record here as well. Um, in fact, uh, Der Jerry, do you have it handy or do I need to look it up? I don't have it handy, um, but it's already in the record of the select, the select board. board meeting, right? Yes. So yes. I mean, who, yeah. does anybody want to hear it? Um, I, you know, I, I, I'd like to read it so that we can all hear what I what I said. All right. So um, I was given, you know, two minutes maximum. So I, I read the following statement. Uh, we respectfully still request to be able to present our findings and recommendations at an upcoming select board meeting. Our belief is that there are alternatives to what was recommended by the long-term planning committee that you should consider, particularly in light of the fact that we've been carefully watching and studying this operation for the past year. As our report, that's number one. Number two, as our report indicates, history has shown that the estate can be and was operated profitably as an event venue and historic building under its current pre, uh, well, under its current operating model in non-COVID-19 times. We also believe it could slowly build back up its retained earnings. We further believe that the buildup could be accelerated once operations are at normal capacity. Um, number three, it seems unfair to saddle it with the burden of supporting the other buildings on the property under the same enterprise fund. The support of the other structures is something that must be dealt with regardless of what operating model is ultimately chosen. In our report, you will find suggestions for fundraising to help with that needed capital infusion. Uh, point four, town meeting voted in 2019 to maintain control of the estate and surrounding property. And as such, that expense needs to be borne somehow. And by that, I meant the, the, the remainder of the, all of the buildings and so forth. But it seems unrealistic to make the event venue support the entire property. We don't believe that was ever the intent of the citizens of North Andover. And then number four, finally, as a committee, we have not yet met to discuss the findings of KP law. We will do so at our next meeting. So that was the statement I read um, based on all of our input. Um, and I got basically no reaction whatsoever <laughs> and uh, have heard nothing since. Crickets. Yep. Crickets. Jerry, crickets. Yes. Very so, surprising. Yeah. From my own point of view. Very surprising. So I, I wasn't able to listen to the rest of that meeting, but Jerry, I think you did. And you told me they, they, they never commented or anything. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. You read your statement and they moved on. They moved on. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, um, so that's the first part of my update. We can, oh, well, do, do you guys want to discuss that point or should I just finish and then we can discuss the whole thing? Discuss the whole thing. I okay. Think. Yeah. So I also met um, earlier that afternoon with uh, town manager, Melissa uh, Rodriguez. And, and um, you know, I had a pretty frank discussion with her that, you know, we were, I'll summarize it by saying, you know, as a, as a board, we're kind of frustrated. Uh, we feel like, we're largely ignored and, um, you know, uh, how do I put it? Um, if we were to take the KP law findings at face value, that we wonder what our purpose really is. So, uh, and that, and I made sure she, you know, got that message that we were all kind of, you know, surprised at the way we were being basically ignored for lack of a better word. Was um, Tom with you in that meeting? Did no, he, he he was not able to make it. Okay. Something came up at the last meeting. He was supposed to be in and he couldn't make it. So, um, you know, I, I, I believe she was sympathetic to that viewpoint. That's my opinion. Um, you know, and um, I think she, 
will hopefully is taking that message to the select board. Uh, but that's really all at the moment. That's really all I, I have on that. Um, and I think that I mean, it's my that's certainly my personal opinion. I feel like that's the opinion of our committee based on our discussions, unless anybody disagrees with me. Um, so tonight, I mean, we obviously on our agenda is discuss to discuss the KP law findings uh, and and take whatever action we deem appropriate based on that. Um, but I just want to let you guys know that I did have that meeting with Melissa and express that sentiment. Well, thanks, Dave. This is Jerry. So thanks, thanks for doing that. Um, the public comment at the select board, number one, and the meeting with Melissa, number two. I think it's it's important that uh, we continue to express our point of view, however it's received or not received, and we keep plowing along until something else changes, basically. That's my point of view. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't really... Uh... Well, we're going to discuss the KP law findings, but but uh, you know, again, taking the at face value, it does does put us in a kind of a I don't know a, a frustrating situation. I suppose is the best way to put it. Did, Robin, what do you? Any other thoughts on that? Um, I too thank you for taking the time to meet with Melissa. All the work you did at the select board. I feel like we're throwing a pebble into the pond and <laughs> I, I don't know how we can get people's attention. So we have to become our own newsroom and somehow get what the work we're doing information about what we are finding and how we're interpreting it and how we can best portray the Stevens estate by sending out our own uh, information, be it through Sarah Bresch with email marketing, uh, press releases about the Stevens estate uh, to the local newspapers, but uh, we need to do better at being our own mouthpiece. And so that's what I'm going to be focusing on in the next three to four months so that we can start 2021 off with the residents of North Andover mm -hmm. having a better understanding of what the Stevens estate represents to the town. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on the on my update? So I think just one one other point. Um, I think there was a failure to realize the amount of effort that this board put into the strategic plan and turn that around in very, very, very short order in a month, or month and change. And I think that was the most uh, disappointing thing to me. I tend not to use frustration you know, too often, but disappointment is kind of my term. Okay. In that even, even that wasn't acknowledged. And either, either it says to me that the strategic plan wasn't wanted, certainly wasn't asked for, but we felt like we, you know, it was something we needed to do. But at least an acknowledgement of pulling together a pretty detailed plan in a few weeks, um, I think is a credit to the commitment of the board to uh, have the, um, be an advocate for the estate and, and also just, just the work that we did and, and having it land, at least for now with a thud, um, doesn't, doesn't dispense what this board put into it. And obviously Andrew and and Joanna for an advisory capacity. I think it, it was a lot of work. So that's all I have to that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I guess one further comment. Melissa did um, tell me that you know she was certain that they had received it, um, and I know that she's looked at it. I don't know. Um, I can't say for certain whether the select board even looked at it. You know, I know all I know is that they got it. Um, so. You know, it, it is what it is. All right. Uh, somebody's phone, I guess. Yeah, All right. I'm trying to turn it off. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess we'll just keep going. Um, so, you know, Melissa, as uh, she had promised, had KP Law investigate, uh, you know, basically go through all of the records available 
and come up with a, a finding. And that paper was distributed. We've all seen it. Um, so, uh, you know, at, on its face, it basically says that we are indeed an advisory committee uh, and there's a role to play there um, in, you know, in helping uh, Joanna and, 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 and the other staff of the estate in whatever ways we can. Uh, we have a voice uh, at, um, you know, we do have a voice and, and to the extent we exist, right, we can make ourselves heard at selectman meeting. Uh, you know, uh, again, we can maybe still be limited to public input, but we at least can, when we introduce ourselves, we are the committee people or the committee here. Um, you know, we can, we can ask for meetings with town employees and, and with our town manager and with our economic development director, who's here every time we meet. So I guess to summarize my viewpoint, we do still have a voice. Uh, I don't know if I, completely agree personally with all of the conclusions they came to my takeaway after i read it was a lot of what they're saying is yeah it's precedent so therefore it is i don't know if i really fully believe or agree with that on the other hand i also don't want to continue to fight um because i don't think it's productive and it doesn't serve anyone's interests ours or the towns or the citizens so um I don't know. Do, does anyone see it differently as a committee? We could we can react in multiple ways to this. Um, but that's that's my personal feeling. How do you did, I mean, I'd like to at least hear from Jerry and Robin if you come up with a different uh, different conclusion. So this is Jerry. So I I had the same conclusion that there was, you know, obviously a lot of work done initially to form the trustee of Osgood Hill and then it kind of went to this in a little bit of ambiguity <laughs> as it relates to um, some of the commitments that, that were made and, and discussed presented etc cetera, etc cetera. and then I think Dave you said a well precedent um, which was a lot of kind of interpretation of kind of the the original documents at, at the um, town meeting, but in addition, the way that the town has essentially managed Stevens estate over this period of time. And quite honestly, it didn't, it didn't surprise me that, that that was the conclusion. I think it's good in a way to have it now, in my mind, settled. I don't think it's worth our time and effort to continue to fight that particular battle. Um, and I think from an advisory capacity to help Joanna out, you know, with, with the estate and the things that we can do that Robin was speaking to with getting the message out, getting the word out and continuing to support it in its, you know, in its current state, I think still adds value and certainly still something that I'm committed to continue to support through my term on the board. Okay. Thank you. You want to add anything, Robin? Yeah, I agree with both of you. Um, I think that we have to become our own newsroom. I think that the outreach plan in our report to the select board is what we need to do in the near term. We need to be meeting with the financial, with the finance committee. We need to be meeting with the st strategic, um, oh gosh, now I forget the name of their committee. But it's it's in the public outreach section of our report, and those are the steps that we should be following. We need to promote ourselves to let everybody know what we're doing, what our objectives are, what Joanna's accomplishments have been in this remarkable time of COVID-19 pandemic, and also how um, we can continue to bolster the Stevens estate to become more profitable and that the Stevens estate depends upon our support in order to do, to, um, to make money. So that's in outreach, that's in supporting Joanna in her plans, that's uh, staffing, that's communications, that's insisting that we be present at other uh, board meetings and being that we're all volunteers, that's, quite a burden for us, but 
with five members, hopefully growing to seven within the next few months because we do need more board members. If we can cut up the jobs that are required to get our work done, it will be more manageable. Okay. Thanks. Just as a point of information, I think the long-term planning committee, is that, that's what you that's were That's what it was. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think they are probably, I don't know if they've been disbanded yet, but I, uh, oh, I, no, it wasn't the one it's still, it's a, it's a, a kernel board in the town of North Andover. It's not the long-term Stevens estate concern. Oh, I can't remember their name. Oh, you mean there's like a, uh, Oh, you're not talking about the long to Stevens long term planning committee because their work is done basically, right? Yes. Um, I think I know you're you're talking about. Um, I tell you in a second, actually. Committees and boards. Is that the master plan committee? Where is our? What are you guys looking for? Yeah, help me, Andrew. Help me. Um, You're help. <laughs> we, I, I put it in our report, um, our recommendation that we meet with the select board, the finance committee, and then there's a third committee that has, you know, the bird's eye view of the town of North Andover, and so we need it's to master uh, master master plan implementation committee. Yeah, that's that sounds probably. right. That okay. sounds right. Although. You know, and the master plan implementation committee, just to give folks, I mean, they've just formed and just started to meet um, and they're advisory in nature. And they have like a pretty specific um, charge where they're they're focused in on, um, you know, providing updates to the board of selectmen and the planning board on uh, the the progress with respect to the strategies outlined in the master plan and also to prioritize which strategies should be undertaken, when they should be undertaken you know, whether the, you know, the town should apply funding for um, certain strategies. So uh, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is, and I'm not questioning that you could have a productive conversation with them. I just don't know what specifically you would discuss with them in regards to your charge. Then that's not the one because. <laughs> okay. All right. And then, and then to Dave's point, the, the long-term, um, the Stevens Estate Long-Term Advisory Committee, if that's what you're referring to, uh, they are no longer active. They're dissolved, right? They're they're essentially dissolved. I don't know if anybody actually like voted them dissolved, but it said in their charter or their mission statement that they would dissolve after they provided a recommendation. Okay. All right. So wrapping up um, number four, there's another sort of point here about um given the anticipated the planning board that's what it was i just pulled okay. up the re our uh, recommendation okay okay hi gene yep gene we're on um yeah you're muted so you know we're on we are on uh, item four now did we just make the quorum now, or am I missing somebody in my screen? No, uh, I thought the quorum was three, so I started the meeting. Yeah. Three fifths is a majority, right? So that was the logic we were using. I don't know if that's uh, actually correct, but okay. uh, going with it. Um, do you happen to know Andrew? Yeah, that would, it, it would be a court. So there, this is a five member board, right? We're only yeah. missing Tom. Tom's the right. only other member. Yeah. Um, then, yeah, that is correct. Although, do we are, are we a fully appointed board? Is this no, board can fully we, appointed? and we need help with that. Yeah, we there's seven more people. Yeah, there's supposed to be seven of us, and there are only five. Oh, oh. Um, so I'm not sure if then a quorum might be four, given that it's supposed to be a seven member board. All right. Well, in any that, event, but yeah, I've we now have four. Really we do have, we have four here. It'll be, you know. Too far gone now. Yeah. You guys haven't taken any votes or anything. No. 
Just the minutes. Do we need to reapprove the minutes? Well, let's just make sure. Um, let's just, do that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make sure. sure. I guess belt and suspenders. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. So, Gene, we we um, Jerry made a motion and Robin seconded it that we approve the minutes from August twelfth, August twenty sixth, and September fifteenth. And uh, uh, would would you approve that? Yes. Yeah. Or, yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, item two is fully approved. No matter what our quorum requirement would have been, if it's either three or four, we're good now. And yeah, we haven't taken any other votes. Uh, we've just been giving information so far. Okay. All right. So you're up. You're up to speed. Um, so so thank. So, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah. So one one thing related to number four. I think. I think now we have the opportunity to kind of relook at our mission statement. And possibly, I'm just kind of throwing it out there. Because uh, I think up until now, it's we, it's a bit, there's been a little bit of this quandary around what's our role, what are you supposed to do, you know, that kind of stuff. So if we accept the KP law decision, and we are indeed an advisory board, I think it might be valuable at some point in the not too distant future to think about a mission, a mission statement or something, which we can pull from some of the stuff that's already in the strategic plan report. Um, but a lot of that, I think Joanna essentially developed. Um, but I think as a board, we have the opportunity to at least take a look at that. And if we want to refine that based on, you know, how, we, how we're thinking about it today or other feedback, it's just an opportunity. So I would just throw it out there for uh, folks to consider. Yeah, no, I think that is a good idea. Um, let me put that on on the side for one second because um, I I don't know if we need to take a vote on this, but we seem to be assuming that we're accepting that finding and we're going to move on. I mean, that's personally how I feel, um, but I wonder if we should to, to do things correctly agree as a board that we're not going to fight this anymore and that we're going to accept those findings. So I actually, my, I can make a motion, right? I, um, I'm going to move that we uh, officially accept those findings and um, and uh, and redefine our mission statement, actually, and take an action to do that. Is there a second? If not, there'll be no motion. Well, I'd like to ask a question. Yeah, sure. I have a question. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead, Jean. Um, how, how does this impact the Department of Revenue audit? Or does it? If we it accept, shouldn't. If we accept, well, it, that depends. If we accept what KP law is saying, then do we even have the right to order a Department of Revenue audit? Well, there's my decision. <laughs> I'd still like to see that go forward, and I don't so want to you know. Is, Andrew, is there anything impeding that? I know Melissa approved it, and it was back in September. Um, I'd have to, yeah, I'd have to get back to you on that. I, I you know, it's, that's a good reminder. Um, Gene, I don't know if anything has changed as far as the status of going forward with that. So let me get back to you. In fact, I will try to reach out to the town manager as we speak and see if I can get some feedback now so I can report back in this meeting. But if not, I will report back as soon as I can. All right. Thank you. That, that I, I, All right. I don't want to so, vote on it. Okay. So I'm with, I'll withdraw it because I agree with you that we should get clarity on that before I make a motion like that. So I'm going to withdraw it. Well, and one other thought, just I know you withdraw it already, but yeah, the report was the KP law report was not made to us, was not made to our board, right? Right, it's essentially made to the town manager, and I don't even think the select board has taken action to accept it or not. I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't think because the report wasn't submitted to us to accept or not accept, I my view is that we stay silent on it basically okay and um move on 
Well, that's that's what's going to happen in the absence of my yeah. option. <laughs> um, okay. I was just looking to see. I thought I'd printed it out because it's going to. Yeah, I did, I'm sure, but I can't find it. Anyway, um, do we want to discuss it any further? All right. Can I just make one comment, Dave? Sure. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it's appropriate to make this comment now. I don't know if folks already know this, but in regards to the um, the RFP that the Stevens Estate Long-Term Advisory Committee had recommended to the Board of Selectmen and that the Board of Selectmen had approved the town manager moving forward on. I just want people to be aware, both the public and you all, to be aware that um, I've been told um, by the town manager that you that this body will be engaged somehow um, in review of whatever that document is. So you'll have input in that process or in that document. Um, and so just to the point of you guys being advisory, I think the town, i.e. the town manager, Board of Selectmen, and whoever else is responsible for putting together that document, they they want to utilize your advisory capacity. So you'll be consulted on that document. Just want to be, make you aware of that. Yep. Thank you, Andrew. And actually, I, I was remiss because Melissa mentioned that to me when I met with her, that that was the intent. So I can confirm that. What Andrew just said is 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 her position. And one more thing, I just got a little bit of a. I don't really have an update on the DLS review of finances, but um, I did hear. I just I texted Melissa, and she told me that um, she's going to call DLS to figure out what's going on. Uh, so from that email, from that text message, it sounds like her intent is for the process still to move forward. We just, I guess, we just have yet to hear from DLS on when they're going to move forward. So that's um, the Department of Labor. Uh, it's um, no, it's actually Division of Local Services. Division of Local Services. Um, it's a part of DOR, Department of Revenue. And so I think their charge is to work with municipalities on revenue and financial re finance related issues. And so this is sort of in their wheelhouse to sort of do technical assistance, review of audit, you know, review of financial information, audits, things like that. Um, Great. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So. All right. Well, that was number five. So. 5A. Um, and there's been a uh, um, other part of five with we got any, you know, back many meetings ago, we had requested something like 21 different, uh, or forget the number, but a large number of items from uh, town manager and got some of them and some are still outstanding. But Jerry, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've had any updates since our last meeting on any of that. No, we haven't had any updates for quite a while. Okay. And I think we, we the intention was to funnel a lot of that into the forensic audit work or potentially a meeting with the auditors, the other, the folks who do the annual audit. Yeah, that's um, right. We we're going to do both. Yeah. And not try to continue to kind of regurgitate <laughs> to get answers on the same questions that probably the auditors are going to, or DLS is going to ask. So. Okay. okay. Any other discussion on, then on item five or item four? I'm wondering about. Oh, go ahead. I'm wondering about our becoming a fully staffed board with seven members, and how that's going to, uh, how that can help us do our work, and be more functional, and the. Um, the effects that it would have on all of this decision making we have before us tonight. Um, I think if we had seven I members, we that process to actually get the two people appointed. Uh, myself and I think Jerry, right, were the last people on. Uh, or was it you, David? No, yourself and Tom were the. Most. Oh, that's right, the last people on. I mean, I was January and Tom was over the summer, but those spots have been vacant. So how can we facilitate that the two people actually get appointed? I know we have to wait for people to apply, but I was under the understanding when I interviewed that there was seven applicants and I was the only one chosen. And I don't think it's for my skill level. I think it's, I don't, I don't know, you know, 
I think, um, you know, I think, you know, again, the, and I think the town did do this, if I'm not mistaken, I think there was a, you know, a town blast through town news and, and, and um, social media to advertise that there were vacancies or are vacancies on the, on the board. And so that can certainly be done again. Um, and then, you know, there can be a personal recruiting effort on your parts if you wanted to, if you know folks that might be interested in serving on a town board or committee in general, and specifically this one, you know, please encourage them to apply and participate. Um, and I'm sure the town would be happy to consider them. Is it feasible to get that public notice out this week? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do we, we, Joanna, do we, can you just, can you, um, can you send me a reminder, Joanna, just, or to, can we just go cue it? I'll just run it by Melissa to make sure it's okay to advertise. I'm sure it is. Um, and then we'll just get it out through Sarah. Can I ask, do we know if there's anybody who has actually, you know, applied online and that has not been interviewed or we haven't considered or? I don't, but when I um, go through Melissa to, you know, say that I want to, advertise this again I'll, I'll inquire and say do we have anybody in the queue that just we haven't put you know okay. put forward for some reason or you know just try to get an update on okay. um okay would so the selectmen interview select board interviews the candidates but the candidate but the funnel of candidates um comes through town town offices andrew is that right yes yeah okay so there's no point in me going to chris for instance and saying hey wrestle up some candidates he's he's not the one who does that I mean, the select board well, you, want to do that. you could you could i mean you know anybody who works for the town or is represented in a town board whether it's the board of select or your board um and you guys are all obviously residents of the town you know people you have neighbors you have friends you have colleagues i mean you can talk to people and see if there's a, you know because sometimes it takes more of a grassroots effort than sending out things via email and social media. Sometimes it takes, you know, a little bit of a nudge, nudge by, okay. you know, friends. Well, we don't even know if there's already 20 applications sitting in town hall and maybe they haven't even had the chance to review them. I, I'm not saying, I'm not saying there is or there isn't, but I just, I would be very, I'd be very surprised if there was a stack of applications that was being ignored. I mean, I, you know, I, I know there's a lot going on. I would like to think that if there was that many applicants, that people would be like, "Whoa!" Like we got, you know, we can we can definitely um, accommodate getting, you know, getting the board fully staffed. Come on, uh, Andrew, so how are those down applications down funneled into the town? Where do they where do they go in through? There's, um, I'd have to take a look. I'm not actually familiar necessarily with the whole process. I'm assuming it goes to some central repository, probably monitored by the town manager's um, administrative staff. So one of two people I can think of both might have, you know, be monitoring this email that probably sees um, stuff come in and they would probably forward it on to the town manager. So uh, I can also, I'm, I'm, I think I will ask, I'm going to have a conversation with Chris and ask him if that question, are there, are there really no applicants? So, um, and then let them know we really want members. Can't hurt. So, um, okay. So we just did number 10, by the way. Um, so that's good. Any other com comments or uh, uh, any other items to discuss relative to four and five? Right. Four was the uh, KP law and five was uh, DOR and, and any other responses from town manager. All right, hearing hearing none. Then um, review of current retained earnings report. Well, I have to confess, I did not have time to get it, so um, I don't have an update on that. And Gene, unless you, you know what? Yeah. I apologize, Dave. I yeah. have it, and I oh. had every intention to get it to you, and it didn't happen. So, um, I apologize for that. I did send it to um, and had a discussion about it with uh, Joanna. Why don't I do this? It's a little bit, you know, it's not really great form to share something that um, you haven't put on the uh, agenda. However, it is publicly available information. 
Um, give me a minute here. You can get, you can bear with me. Well, actually, it is on the agenda. It's on the agenda. It's just it is on. No. Oh, okay. But the document itself wasn't shared. Right? Correct. Correct. No, but it's but it's public. It's it's in the financial yeah. report on online. Let me let me just quarterly, pull it up. Quarterly report. Let me just pull it up. Give me one second here. Okay. Thank you. Dave, in the meantime, was there a new agenda? I got the one. I didn't get one off of the calendar invite. Oh, it, it's it's a little hard to see sometimes in those Google Meet calendar invites, but there's a little PDF icon there that you can click on. Oh, okay. Let me look again. It, it, it takes you to the um, it takes you to the uh, okay to the public gonna... agenda. All right, my numbers aren't corresponding with yours. Actually, that link I texted you, if you follow that link, it will pull it up. The one I sent you this morning, the text this morning with the... Oh, a text? Yeah, this morning I texted you a link to the agenda. Because you asked if I had an agenda. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Dave, while um, Andrew's pulling that up, do you want to go to number seven? Sure, yeah. You want to share your? Are you going to share your screen or? I'll give it a shot. <laughs> I, I actually I have it now. If you want to go to that. Okay, go ahead. So go ahead. Refer to you all on what you want to discuss first. So I, I have it queued up, ready to send. If you want to discuss. Uh, That's fine. Yeah. So I'm sending a link. It's to the um. Got it. The retained earnings. Okay. Let's see where we are. And so the high level takeaway is that um, this is as of September 30th and the town accountant um, has certified earnings at $72,297. And that's based on um, revenues comprised of user fees and interest income totaling uh, well, the, it's mostly user fees, $20,194, plus another $87 in interest income. So total operating revenue, 20281 Versus if you go further down, you'll see there are salaries and expenses totaling um, 49744 which brings us to a deficit of 29463 So you take that number out of what the last unbalanced was, on balance was 101,760, so that leaves us with the 72,297. And then the column to the far right that is highlighted in blue is just a projection based on current bookings. And granted, and and, and I'm happy to have Joanna step in and talk more about this and you know what the bookings are and you know what her interpretations of the projections are. But based on the town accountant's projections, she doesn't have a very rosy picture to present. So you'll see no. that. Um, you know, that there would be a projected just $6,691 left at the end of fiscal year 21 based on projecting the rest of, you know, the expenses happening and the uh, estimated revenue being 82133 Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, so, I mean... Can I give an uh, an update just on so the munis revenue as of today is forty five thousand um, dollars. So that if you if you look at that compared to the twenty thousand dollars that we have from September the thirtieth, you can see that that number on that report is just a, a snapshot at that time. Yeah, so I'm wondering why aren't we looking at a munis report? I'm sorry. Why aren't we looking at a munis report? Uh, do you want me to pull one up? Well, hang on a minute. So it's so, on the bottom of the document that we're it is. At. And but this, this oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. sorry. yeah. If you scroll down, it's okay. There, um, Gene, but but again, yeah, this is so snap September. Right. This is a snapshot as of 9 30, 2020. So Joanna, you're saying that that some money came in and since then, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, it says for 2021. Is this period this is period three? Uh, yes. Right. But on this um, report, it says period three. So, is it a cumulative thing, or is it just for um, 
what is it, July, August, September. So wouldn't it be have to be have to be Q1, really? Uh, yeah, so it is, uh, it is the first quarter. Yeah, that's Q1. Right. So it doesn't include, but I'm just, uh, but this is a really good illustration of how it changes throughout, you know, week by week as we get bookings in, as we get revenues in from events. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that accountant projection is assuming like that the Q2 probably assumes Q2, three and four run at the same, you know, poor level yeah. Q1 did, right? So well, well, I think, I think there is some sort of, I think there is a little, you know, there's an analysis of the future booked event based on what the booking report shows. So it doesn't, it doesn't extrapolate the existing events. It just, it looks forward at the booking report. So uh, I was about to say, but then, you know, to Joanna's point, what she's saying is there's more events booked now than there were. We're over halfway to that $82,000 point, which is what the projection is for the full fiscal year in revenue. So that's saying we don't book any more events from now until the end, you know, from now until the end of June. Right. So it, it's not, yeah. So the point is, it's unlikely to be as, as, as low as this. Bleak. Yeah. And I understand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and I will uh, what I'd like to know is Andrew, is this July through September? Yeah. That's what we're looking at, right? Yeah. Well it's 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 yes. I mean the it's starting point is July, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. So I I do have a separate agenda item for Joanna to report on. Um you know, we can we can talk about that now if you want. Um well let's Let's take item seven. Yeah, I think we. I'd rather do Which that, is, and we'll come back and Johnny can take us through the bookings and so yeah, forth. The, they actually, the the P and L will will is is kind of the middle step towards the booking report. So it's a good position to stay in with Jerry's report. Okay, all right. So then, um, I just want to download this before I forget to do it. <laughs> uh, Oh, well, I, I can always get this later, right? I mean, it's up on the uh, website. Andrew, you said, right? It's supposed to. Back to the report, because unfortunately, you know, I don't know what the public is viewing. So I'm sorry to kind of harp on this. So that's Q1. So even if we, we know we always have like a soft, um, a soft quarter, which is usually the winter, um, but even if you tripled that number, you're up to 60, you know, 60,000 something. I'm just looking at where the budget is and everything. So again, you know, you're going to exceed that. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of thinking out loud. And I'm looking at all your bookings that you have for, well, that's next, that's fiscal 22. Yeah, right, we don't. Have okay, so let's, let's, yep. let's, just, let's take a pause for a second. Yes, please. Let's get to number seven. So we saw retained earnings. That's a snapshot. The finance group at the be of the town is making their own assumptions around their own projection. And you know, we don't have a lot of influence over that, right? Yep. It's a snapshot. It is what it is. Yeah. So go ahead, uh, Jerry. All right. So now Hopefully. All right. So this can everybody see this? Yep. Okay. And what about the retained the no, I'm sorry, I can't. Go ahead. Okay, so this is what I sent out um, a couple of days ago. We did an update of this back in May, and then, then we got hung up with the uh, strategic plans. So I don't think it's been updated since May. So this is um, basically by quarter, fiscal year 21 by quarter, and then a full year with the um, projected number of events, wedding, social, by type, basically town and corporate. Yeah. So Q1, 21 is actuals. Um, hey, I'm Jerry, Jerry, excuse me. Can yeah. you can you maybe make this full screen? Um, well, it's pretty small. Oh, just 
sorry. Uh, I see it full screen on mine, so let me. What's the trick to make it full screen? Well, first of all, um, up on the top right, if you hit that, yep. um, the uh, right next to the X, that one, yep. That helps yep. a little bit. And then I think um, if you go down, if you pull your mouse down to the bottom, a little menu will come up. And then if you click on the uh, on the right, on the three dots on the right. I don't see that. So pull your mouse. Oh well, if you pull your mouse down towards the bottom of your screen, doesn't a little white meeting details bar come up? I have to go back to the meeting. Yeah. yeah, and then if you can go to hit full screen over there. And now we just see ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, I, see, I see you too. And I don't know. I got to get back to my. Uh, Presentation. Now I'm full screen. Hmm. No, I don't. I'm not that familiar with this. Uh... So when you, uh, yeah, when you, uh, um, Yeah, that's probably not good. All right. All right. Well, you've got it. I sent it out a couple of days ago. Do you have it on your desktop? Or if no. I go out of. I do. Yeah, I'm sure I do. Um, I'll open it that way. That's probably a better idea. All right. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah. No. Uh... So Robin, you've got it. Jean, do you have it? I'm looking at it. Yep, I've got it. Okay. 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 So while Dave's um, looking for his version, just to uh, get everybody oriented, so same same format that we've been using all along. Um, so to point out that Q121 is now actuals. So these were event the number of events based on. Joanna's input, um, and then the, the salaries and operating expenses, the forecast, or the actuals for revenue are all in here now. Those came right out of the uh, quarterly uh, financial report that hopefully line up with what Andrew just showed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Andrew, can we get an end of the year, a final end of the year um, closeout for fiscal 20 in uh, Munis? Yeah, I feel like I've sent that on a couple occasions to maybe yeah, Jerry and Dave. That, um, it still had encumbrances on it that hadn't been liquidated or returned back to the account. So I want to know if they were either you, you know, expended on bills that came in after July 1 or if those funds went back into the account. Okay. All right. So for this, um, without going into every single detail, so basically what, what Joanna did was she updated her forecast for Q2, Q3, Q4, get by number of events by type. Uh, I'll remind the board that these, the dollars that show up here are based on historical performance per event. Obviously, with COVID and everything else, go and some other restrictions that uh, are under, um, you know, kind of phase three of COVID. Um, that's going to impact, you know, the amount of revenue that's coming out of each event because they'll, they'll probably be smaller. Um, certainly for weddings, that will probably be an impact. But regardless, to try to keep everything apples to apples. So basically, what you see for the full year is we had originally forecasted 75 events back in April 1st and our mm -hmm. revised forecast as of today is 43 events for the year 
that equates to revenue 176.069 operating revenue. Mm -hmm. And then just to show the delta of the operating revenue between obviously we had forecasted 397,771 back in April. It's now 176. So our revenue is down, you know, a little over 200,000. Projection, forecast. Yep. Um, so I didn't do anything with expenses because all we have is actuals. So we're not trying to forecast expenses here or anything like that. Again, that's all part of the retained earnings report. Um, because I think it's very hard to uh, kind of project that. But really, the, the intent here is really re try to forecast revenue. Could Assuming expenses in? stay flat. Yep. Can I jump in, Jerry, just with an interesting uh, piece of information? So in the blue box in the retained earnings spreadsheet, um, the, the town's projected total expenses are 177000 so basically it means keeping an eye on my operating expenses as I have been doing and keeping my minimum, my expense, event expenses down low. That would mean we're basically breaking even. Yeah, again, it's, it's, it's all, there's a lot of assumptions in here. So I yeah. think it's hard to yeah. even project where we're gonna end up at the end of FY21. But to your point, it's the same same thing. It's trying to manage increased revenue, increase those opportunities where they present themselves, control expenses, which you do very well. Yeah. And keep keep chugging along um, till we get hopefully getting in a better place with COVID. Yeah. And uh, and things start to turn back up again. But, so that How many this this shows you they can break even. Yeah. So this this just shows you the difference between what, again, based on all the assumptions here, Joanna's input, you know, we're showing potential revenue of 176, and the retained earnings report showed like, what is it, 82,000 or something like that. So it's it's not down. right or wrong. It's just yeah. it's just different way of looking at it, which is. Yeah. which is fine in a normal year our budget our expenses meet our revenue but in this year if say for example if we're looking at 50 percent we can assume that our expenses will be down significantly in line with the lower revenue um so yes absolutely very uh, a very good illustration thanks jerry yeah all right um anyone else have any comments on it, it looks good to me I mean, it looks good. I say good. It looks it looks um, appropriate. For twenty. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we'd like it to be better, but I'd like a vaccine for COVID too, and I don't have one yet. So, um, given the circumstances, I think it's fine. Any uh, any other discussion on that? Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Um, let's turn now to marketing, Robin. It's a pretty succinct report. Um, Joanna and I have been working on a press release for the murder mystery night scheduled for October 31st. So that is going out to the Eagle Tribune, to the North Andover Citizen, and to the North Andover Patch. I'll also be listing the event in all of the events, which is a, it's a small blurb on all of the media outlets. So I'll be putting that into the listings, but I'm hoping the press release gets um, some wider uh, coverage in the in the local news. Uh, and... I've had, can I just give a, a very quick update on that, Robin? Yes. Um, so this relates to, um, we were considering, um, we've actually got a lot of people booked for the second seating, but not a lot of people booked for the first seating so far. So. Um, we've come up with this concept whereby we are offering um, to work in partnership with the Colla Kindness Collaborative, which is a North Andover nonprofit, and we are going to ask them to nominate one deserved family um, who we will, between ourselves and the caterers, we will um, cover their meals and their entertainment for them. And it will also give us additional exposure on uh, local mom's uh, pages too. So 
uh, but they've already they accepted i just got an email during our board meeting the kind that uh, the kindness collaborative the president just emailed me and said she's really excited about working with us on this so yeah nice job right. joanna so that will be part of the of the press release that will be the story so anyway okay. thanks robin back to you yep. <laughs> Then the other piece is more yours, Joanna. That would be the website. I understand you have some news to share about that. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we've been working on the website and I've actually, I think I can, uh, can I share the screen and I'll just give you a yeah. quick overview? Please. Love it. Awesome, okay. Uh, Chrome tab. Hang on, I know it's our it's our agenda. Even just stay twenty. Okay. So this is basically it. It's it's kind of published, but it's on, on an offset of our regular page right now. But you're seeing it as the public would see. Can everybody see the screen? Yep. Awesome. So I still, um, we still need to do a little bit of wordsmithing. Um, there's way too many words. <laughs> um, but this is a really good um, uh, kind of overview. There's different pages that I'll go through very, very quickly. Um, but there's a lot of focus on um, the profits from our events going into our restoration program. Um, and then actually i've created some sub um, sections which i wanted to talk to you about this is the about us about the history it's also including some elements uh, concerning oscar wilde and our uh, aesthetic movement um that's a great picture uh, right there joan i love that picture thank you that i took that this time last year and right now that tree um i think it's a copper beach but it looks just like that it's beautiful really nice time of the year thanks dave <laughs> um but yeah some more photos there so i did it so that it'll be great for uh, scrolling um on mobile phones so i've been basically using creating the google site on my laptop uh with my phone next to me and i've been constantly looking at my phone to kind of fix the um the, the wording if it's in the wrong place etc if it overlaps and things like that um again still a little word this purpose word is a little boring so i need some help maybe robin can help me with that one yeah this we need a donate button that's much more obvious yeah so uh, actually i was going to come to that andrew and i have spoken about that and that was something i wanted to mention um to, uh, tonight too in our meeting but uh, basically this talks about our current pro programs um and initiatives so people are aware of what has happened mm. uh what's going on um the 1886 bedroom which is our latest initiative so you can basically find out all about that um and some nice photographs uh, the next uh on this section is email subscriptions you can scrap subscribe to our email list um whether it's events specifically or whether it's for education or historical tours things like that and that was just created with the google form um then donations so yes yes we do need a more obvious placement for it but um yeah this is this is half mile hill uh it talks we've got our mission statement in there and then basically this is a make a donation it's a google form so the, there's a couple of elements to to this we need a system whereby we can receive donations and there's a financial kind of piece of this that would allow that to happen um and i think i already asked jean if she would be so kind as to look into that because that's kind of her um her area of expertise um but i'm also looking at a couple of other like um, the historical society a lot of these other nonprofits have um mm -hmm. donated buttons which go through to these financial interfaces so um, I'm going to be working on that and then the second piece of this as I was talking with Andrew this week so as we all know every donation has to be approved by um, the select board so we don't know what format or what frequency or what quantity uh, any donations will take because we're kind of starting from uh, scratch right now so I think um, I want to basically create a separate form through Google Forms, which 
enables people to write a little bit more of a description and they can upload um, some photographs if they needed to. But basically it, it allows me to print off a form and then I would be able to send it for submission to the Board of Selectmen uh, and put on their agenda so that they could uh, take a look at it and approve it if they so wish. Um, right. That's kind of a, um, uh, the piece that we're working on right now. Um, yep. Any questions so far on this? Looks yep, wonderful. Sir. So this is still a, a kind of a work in progress, right? This isn't live. Yeah, it, I, so basically, I want it. I wanted it to be live it, before our Halloween event, but I don't. It's kind of getting close. Um, I don't know whether we'll have the donation piece set up by then. Um, but um, yeah, I, I know our IT department here in town are very, very um, busy with a lot of things going on right now. So. We shall see, but I'll keep you posted um, when I get a yeah. better idea. So I would just say, um, let's not let the donations element of this impede you from getting it up and live. I think I've commented on this before. The perfect can be the enemy of the good, right? Make it. Right. Yeah. This is this is light years probably ahead of you know what we've got. So which is great, um, right. and then we just keep keep building upon it and make it better as we go along but it's good to get started with something that better represents the estate and you've done yeah. a great job great, great job with that so yeah amen i want to add that it's it's completely modernized now this looks a lot more like a 2020 website than the old one did so right yeah beautiful photos awesome most of the photos are mine of my photos that i've taken so yeah <laughs> it's good to get them off my camera <laughs> um, Plan your event. This is a form that um, people can complete, whether it's a wedding or a different type of event. They can send some information, get some information. Um, I've also got a separate contact us page with my email, you know, contact information. Um, also, our Facebook and Instagram link, and then some directions. I should be a web webmaster in my uh, real life. Yeah. Um, and then on this section, the, the, I haven't finished all of the details yet, but basically this is what I'm going to put um, our COVID protocols on. I've got some review um, elements in here, which are basically links to some review sites, you know, the wedding website, the mark, for example. And then there's actually one that I've been able to uh, embed right on the page. Um, and then- I'm sorry, go ahead, Jean. Doesn't the knot or another wedding website, don't they? Didn't you get some kind of award as, after getting so many positive with high reviews, you get like not not approved or something? Yeah. But, yeah. but there's some, some kind of designation that can't you um, put that like on the front page? You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. a medallion. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? those yeah it was some kind of designation that the stevens estate got for getting superior reviews all the time That's and right. i think that needs to be promoted on um you know the landing page every page really but yeah awesome i will yes yeah. yeah. and joanne i have one comment if, if can you go to the um about page for a second yeah uh Does it say, because are, are we um, a registered historic site? Yes. So we should say that somewhere. It is in here, but um, I think I've got it on the bottom of the page. <laughs> Listed on the National Register. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, that deserves to be, um, I think, highlighted and uh, maybe even on the landing page. Yeah. So it is, I think it's. Uh, because yeah. it's kind of like you know, um, I think I think for some people anyway, it's a it's a it's a draw. Yeah. Okay. I will uh, make a note and, and make that more visible. Yeah. All right. Great. And that's all also, I got. Also, uh, putting um, a purpose because the, I I mean Andrew might know better than I, but. I just know from in the schools accepting donations and if they had a specific purpose, 
you know, somebody could say, I want to buy new trash barrels for the place. You have to use that money specifically for that if they have an intended purpose. Or if you just have a generic donation to, and you can say it'll go to, you know, maintaining the estate and repairs and maintenance and general operational, more generalized yeah. than specific specifying it because you're going to get 10 $100 donations and then you're going to end up having to track each one to make sure that they went for that specific purpose. Okay. And it was a nightmare. And I did that on the school end with something. So it was, um, it was kind of a track of every time somebody made it, they wanted it for that. Yeah. Okay. So I will, um, yeah, I'll pay more attention to, to the form that I create. For that. I just, and this is just one little piece. I haven't followed up on this yet with the town manager, but I did, you know, forward this on to the town manager just to make sure she knew, Hey, we're a new, a new website's being worked on here. Some progress with it. And her only observation on the, um, on the donation piece was that, um, and I think it's already been mentioned that the, that the board of selectmen would have to approve a donation, any donation made. And that I think she mentioned that, I guess you, Joanna, maybe you have to fill out some sort of ethics paperwork or something. There's some paperwork that has to be filled out prior to being able to receive the donation or to solicit the donation. Huh, okay. To solicit. I have verbiage for that, Joanna. I can help you with that. I work for a nonprofit. Okay, thank you. Is yeah, it just sure. an ethics exam that you have to take every two years, Andrew? No, I, I no, I think it's just something about. I'm not. Ex I'm not even hundred percent sure. Like a conflict of interest yeah. or anything. Yeah, or something like that. And five hundred one C three blah 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 blah. Hmm. So I'll, I'll figure out what it is specifically. Yeah. I can get the going on that. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Um. So is that is that uh it for marketing, um, Robin? Yes, indeed. All right. And may I ask if there's something specific that you want to see month to month for a marketing report? Let us know. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, just generally, I, I, you know, uh, sort of a summary of what what's going on is this what I'm looking for. What I do. Do you want for. it written? I think that would be lovely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. I think it would be we nice can, to have it written can... because then it can go in the record, right? It goes in the minutes as an attachment. So yeah, that would, that would probably be better. It would save Jerry from having to frantically take notes while you're. Yeah. yeah let's give Jerry a break. <laughs> Jerry is saying what? Um, Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so moving right along number nine, estate operations. So we have a director's report and this part B is a proposal to start a subcommittee to track estate needs in our, as part of our, um, life here. So uh, Joanna, do you want to take us through a quick uh, update? Yes, I will. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give you an update since the last uh, board meeting we had on September the 15th. Um, seems like six months ago now. Um, so we had one uh, wedding, the September the 20th wedding. We had the 100th anniversary of the North Andover Garden Club in the tent, which was a really nice event too. We've had three funeral receptions, unfortunately. Um, the latest one was last Thursday. Um, <laughs> no, no talk of how many weddings and how many funerals, please. <laughs> Dave. Um, we've also had a couple of town meetings, um, like we've had a select board uh, planning meeting. We've had what, a couple of Andrews uh, meetings and the department meetings, which have been great, uh, good use of the space. Um, we've had a poet's corner um, with a tour. I gave about 10 people a tour for that one. Um, and then this past weekend, we had the Stephen's Memorial Library three-day book sale, which was a huge success, apparently. Um, everybody is really raving about it, and they might want to do the May um, book sale with us next year and the October, so they might want to come and start doing two book sales with us, um, May and October, um, in the 10th, because it worked yep. so well. I, uh, I have to say, I went to, I, I was there. Um, on I, I, couldn't, I knew there was somebody that looked like Dave, and I was like, no, it's, you don't look like you with your mask on. Did you right. see? I had pa the Patriots mask, probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 it was great. Uh, I thought it was set up really well. Uh, people were, there were a fair number of people there, actually, when I was, when I came on Saturday um, afternoon. And it was beautiful, perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better day. Yeah. Actually, 
Saturday and Sunday were both good. Yeah, yeah, they were. Um, yeah, so that was really, really good. Um, in terms of inquiries, etc., we have received uh, over 88 email only inquiries, a few more phone calls um, since last month, uh, just over 30 days. Um, we've had 19 tours for weddings and events, plus uh, 18 to 20 people that toured uh, during the book sale this past weekend and the poets poets meeting. Um, in the past month since the last uh, board meeting, I have booked three weddings, three funerals. That's where you can last day. Um, and then I'm having lots of ongoing conversations with different people. I've got 12 proposals out, including seven wed weddings for this year, this fiscal year and the next two fiscal years with a value of over $100,000. Um, and then I'll just go over the budget, um, which includes the munis today and then the booking reports. Um, so as I said, I jumped in earlier, um, apologies, when Dave was speaking. So the munis revenue to date is um, $45,000. Um, the revenue revenue in the booking report, which is business booked for this next this fiscal year until the end of June, is eighty eight thousand. Um, plus, I always anticipate a thirty percent increase um, in day of event revenue, so that would bring it to one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars in uh, business booked this fiscal year. Um, in business booked next fiscal year, we've got $133,389 plus an anticipated increase of 30%, which is $173,400. So that's for the next fiscal year. If we stopped booking today, of course. Um, <clears throat> um, and then in terms of our expenses up to date, I looked in units today. So we've got salaries, 55,000, but that includes my the encumbered full-time salary so right now we're at about thirty-five thousand. general expenses are about forty-five thousand, um and total expenses actually spent to date is eighty thousand six hundred. um and then so andrew asked me to um look into and i think what i should do is probably send a document and we can discuss it for the next board meeting but um, there are a couple of items that we still have in our budget um, which relate to capital improvement projects. And Andrew, and I think Lynn originally, Lynn Savage originally suggested that we look at what funds we can take out of our capital expense budget and put back into retained earnings. Isn't that right, Andrew? So basically, we've got a bigger cushion in retained earnings when we go through this year and we get to the end of the fiscal year. Um, I have um, I've highlighted uh, $55,000 that I think we can um, set aside and, and put back. But one of these includes $40,000 for the garden room roof, which I, I want to speak to Steve Foster about to see whether um, that the roof is, it seems to be like we've been talking and, and we've, we've been planning to restore the, uh, repair the roof for about three, four years now. It's still in um, the shape it was three or four years ago. So could we perhaps push it over to FY22? That means we would get the $40,000 back into retained earnings for this fiscal year at the end of the year when we need it. Um, but I will, when I speak to Steve Foster, I'll follow up with everybody in what his response is and maybe ask him to put some words together to bring to the next board meeting relating to that. Joanna, can I interject real quick? Yeah. Can I, it's okay with Dave and the chair. Is it okay yep. if I just make a comment on that? So just to provide a little more context. So yeah, to, to what Joanna is saying, it, that was in response to um, Lynn Savage, the town accountant, you know, providing me with the uh, the retained earnings report that you saw earlier and, and seeing the lower number and saying, okay, you know what can we do to make sure that we we don't have the earnings. earnings exactly as best we can and so her suggestion was to look at the outstanding capital projects that had encumbered funds and that ones that you know maybe we weren't going to use at least readily and then um we could close that close those accounts out and then the um the funds would flow back into the retained earnings account now the the issue with that and i could be wrong but this is my understanding 
is that once you do that, then you have to take the action and the step to then reappropriate those funds to the capital project. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? So like these, the town through its town meeting process has approved the funding for these projects. But once you relinquish that, you're essentially, I think you're giving up that right. And then unless you come back in a, a, a subsequent fiscal year and say, okay, now we're ready to do this project and we want to reappropriate it for this project. So Joanna brought up the roof project. I look at it a little differently. I wouldn't, if we knew we were going to do that roof project in the next year or two, I would keep it encumbered unless it was like a dire situation where we needed that money to come right back into the, um, you know, into the retained earnings. But my sense would be why, you know, why put it back to town meeting? If, if they've appropriated the funding and it's there for the purpose of repairing the roof, then let's just keep it in place. And when we're ready to do the roof project, we'll utilize that fund, those funds. But, you know, we could have a, we could have a, you know, a different conversation if folks felt otherwise, or if the town manager wanted to, you know, chime in about it or well, so I, I have an observation about that. What I was gonna, I was gonna make two comments. One is I don't, I think it's good for Joanna to check in with Steve, and see how desperate that need is, just yes. so we have that information. I think that would be smart, regardless. My second comment was going to be, maybe this is something we keep an eye on and see as we get farther into the fiscal year if we really think it's necessary, right? So, for example, if Joanna hits her what she currently thinks are her targets, the RE might not go down as far as it looks like it does on that blue box. It might might be better. If it's not, it could always, I mean, we have until June, right, to make that decision. Well, obviously, with some lead time before that, but we have a well, while. The, the, I'm sorry. Well, the, the only thing is, is that um, we would need to, like, you know, if you wanted to put money back in this fiscal year, right. this coming right. fiscal year, you would need to know, let's say in like February, March before you're, you know, as you're, or maybe even earlier than that, as you're doing the budgeting for capital projects. So that's the only thing is, is that if you knew you were going to use some amount of funding for a capital project this coming fiscal year, you would need to kind of know that going into this budgeting process. Okay. That's the only caveat. But that still hasn't begun as of yet. So there's no time. So there's, there's some time. Yeah. Then I was going to make another comment, which is, um, Robin, maybe maybe one of our fundraising um, uh, tactics could be to assign fundraising to specific things. Like, hey, it needs a roof. Why don't we have, you know what I mean? Try to put something together around um, a, a specific goal like that. Not that I, not and advertise that, that to donors, and that well, way their donation is more easily tracked. Right. They know exactly what they're doing. Right. right? right. I mean, I, not that I'm such a rich person, but um, but I've asked a lot of people for money in my life. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I also I serve on another charitable board and and um, that's one of our techniques is to we've, we've sort of stumbled and realized that it works better with donors often if they have a targeted goal. You know, like I want to, I I want to make X Y Z happen. I'll donate to that. I might not donate in general, but I might donate to that specific goal. So just a suggestion. Help focus focus that effort maybe a little bit. So you know, um, okay. Uh, so I think bottom line, Joanna, I think it's good to talk with Steve so you have your information, but maybe not start that effort quite so soon, just in case we're. Not gonna, in case we don't need to, because to Andrew's point, if we don't need to do it, it would be a shame to do it, right? Since that money's already allocated, approved. If we can, if we don't have to pull it out, it would be better if we didn't. Well, can I ask a question? You may have already discussed this before I got here. What's the timeline to put out that um, that RFP for that the long-term planning committee recommended? Actually, Why and, and what is going to be under that? Are the repairs and maintenance, are they responsible for that? The town's still responsible for that? Like, are we spending $40,000 where we don't need to spend it because they're going to pick it up? Well, so oh. that, that's that's an excellent point. So um, to your first question, Gene, about the timeline, I don't have a specific timeline. I mean, we're I know that um, efforts are underway to start drafting that, that document, but um, I don't have a um, an end date in sight on when it will be prepared. My assumption is it will be prepared by town meeting or before town meeting. So there can be some 
consideration of it um, prior to town meeting is my assumption. Um, and then as far as what will be contained in it and maintenance and so forth, yeah, I, I, I think that, that the town envisions the, um, the managing entity, whoever that might be or whatever that might be, to be responsible for um, repairs and maintenance. So your, your point is well taken. And that was actually one of my concerns. So we had the, the roof project, ta uh, and I, along with Joanna, consulted with Steve Foster on the, um, we were actually, we were running a little short on the budget for the roof project. And we could have probably put it out to bid and maybe, you know, with a with a well engineered sort of quote, maybe we could have done it this year. But I, I my concern was putting it out, having a tight budget, and then knowing we were going into this process to, to develop this RFP and then potentially have a different management entity at some point in the future. Was it really necessary for us to use all this money on the roof if it didn't need to be done absolutely right now? And his response essentially was no, the roof can wait another year, even maybe a maybe another two years potentially. Um, so we'll have to just continue to monitor it with Steve to see what the necessity of that is. Um, but my sense would be that, you know, unless there's a complete bust on this RFP that maybe we just leave that to the, you know, to the next controlling entity here. Um, so we'll All see. Right. Okay, do um, we have any more discussion on Joanna's reports, the state operations item nine? So just a, so this is Jerry, just a comment. Again, I'd like to see Joanna in your, in your reports. You've got active capital projects that are approved. I mean, what three or four of them, I think. I'd like to I'd like to see what the status is each month you report, or whether you want to do it every month or every month, other month. I don't care. But I want yeah, visibility to the projects. How are they progressing? Et cetera, et cetera. So. Right now, that would be an excellent assignment for an operations subcommittee. Um, I was going to say for our capital project, we're up, all we have got ongoing right now is the boiler project, which is the two year boiler. I'm sorry, um, what was project? Boiler. 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 Thank you. Boiler. Yeah. And move over from um, oil heat to gas. So that won't be taking place until the end of the heating season this year. Next year in the spring but that's the only one that's ongoing right now um the bathroom project was wrapped up this year um yeah but there's all yeah there's all the there's all the operational items that i can put together in my report i'm just talking specifically capital okay you have capital approved projects that were part of the budget whatever they were i don't know them off the top of my head okay just i want to see where those are at Every month or every other month. Okay. okay. Thank you. And then, Robin, do you want to? Um, I think it was you that uh, um, put the item in here to proposal to start a uh, to start a subcommittee to track estate needs. Right, and it would certainly help if we had more um, board members. But yeah. there are things like we don't have security cameras on the buildings. And there has been vandalism on the property. Uh, we don't have security lights. Um, there have been um, capital improvements, and that would be support for Joanna to chronicle those and put them in a spreadsheet, present them at meetings so that inquisitive minds like Jerry have, have their uh, their questions answered um i do, do you do you want to um uh do i think that's the kind of thing we probably need to vote to create i think that it's dependent on our getting two more members because okay. our uh board as it stands now we don't have the capacity all right so, so what, but let me ask a quick this clarification so outside of capital, if it's not a capital project, then it's a maintenance item, right? Operations item that's needed. Yeah, op yeah, maintenance. It's yeah, yeah. Ma maintaining well, the estate. Like kitchens and equipment. Yeah. Right. Getting a dishwasher. I mean, 
all of these things need to be tracked and pushed and um, monitored. Okay, and but I want my ask my point is so the estate has a a, a budget for maintenance, right? For the year, operational yeah. maintenance, and yeah. you've got I assume you've I don't know how much much money's in there, but it's really at your discretion to prioritize what's most critical need from a maintenance perspective. So I think if that's some you know to Robin's question, I think if if we're looking to get a better understanding of how that maintenance fund that's already budgeted is being spent and prioritized, then I think that's something that Joanna could do, you know, fairly easily. If it's if it's something different than that, like future capital projects or I don't know if security lights fall into maintenance or capital, but it, it's either got to be one or the other. It's either expense or it's capital. And we have budgets for both. So for this fiscal year anyway. Yeah, but um, Robin, I think maybe you were, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, it, it, are you are you more or less saying we should, as a board, provide Joanna with a little help tracking that kind of stuff? Yes. Yeah. All right. So how about if I put that in as a placeholder for, for future meetings when we're better staffed? Yeah. Okay. And I'll pull together more of a an outline of what that subcommittee's responsibilities would be. Okay. That sounds good. All right. So if there's nothing further on number nine on Joanna, uh, we'll move on. No, state operations is what I said, Joanna, but I meant the state operations. <laughs> we, we already talked about number 10, filling the vacant board seats. Um, so we have, we're down to new business, public input, and next meeting date. Does anyone want to bring up anything uh, else to talk about new? So one thing, this Jerry, so just one thing that I want to have this ability to is when the budget cycle for fiscal 22 starts oh. um, okay <laughs> so whatever that is we need whatever the schedule is from the town because remember we've we've talked about this as a board before getting ahead of the curve before the budget gets established for fiscal 22 some of the things that we're talking about could could fall easily into that i just yeah, want to make so sure we're allocating time as a board at our meetings for that activity to get ahead of it versus behind it. So the timetable typically uh, comes out in October and then the, all the details get hashed together in November. So between now and our next board meeting, I should be in receipt of the instructions for the next budget. So um, yeah, assuming we have a meeting in November and December, December is going to be too late. So it will have to be the November meeting that we go over all of the, the budget items for next year. So it will have to so, be the November meeting. Okay. So then, I, John, when you get that, maybe can, can you distribute that to us? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. And that way we can come to the November meeting prepared to give input on it? Yeah. So maybe um, as soon as I get it, I will distribute that, but I'll also work on my own um what i'm thinking would be my budget <laughs> um so that you've got some basis to work a foundation to work with and then you can ask me questions on that to um to determine if it's the right approach okay um yeah i'd, I'd actually love to um i think two things should happen one is you should distribute to our entire board that the the your your initial thoughts Okay. We should have a meeting of our finance subcommittee with you prior to our next board meeting. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the finance subcommittee used to be Jerry and me, and I've been trying to uh, move that to be Gene and Jerry. Uh, if you're okay with that, Gene, um, given your expertise, and then I'm chairman and I probably shouldn't be on eight, every subcommittee too. Yeah. Is that okay? So I'll be a de facto, ex facto, y facto, de facto member of it. I so, think Tom's a valuable member of that too. I don't know if we want to offer that to you know him in there or uh, we could. I could ask him. Okay. Uh, 
But in any event, John, I think you should schedule a, a subcommittee meeting. And I guess we're limited to, I think um, under, there's some limit on how many of us can constitute a subcommittee, I believe. Two, yeah. Is it just two two board members? Yeah. So why don't for now, we'll leave it with Jerry and Jean then. And then I might request a separate, somebody to bring me up to speed separately. Jerry, maybe you can just do that. Hey, Dave, apologies. I have to run. So I just wanted to let you know I, I have to go. That's fine. Thanks, Andrew. I think we're almost done anyway. Okay. Have Thanks. a good night. Yeah. Have a good night. Thanks, Andrew. So, Jerry, does that sound So, um, if we had more board members, would we be able to have three people on a subcommittee? I don't think so. I think it's no. because it's half, group. it's less than a quorum. It's a good question. I, I don't no, know. I think it's. I know there's we, something in Robert's rule about it. I, yeah. I, I don't we have to. Go, we have to go back. I can look back at the. Uh, yeah. We, this question okay. came up when Alan was chair. It's a seven-person yeah. board. I th always thought the quorum had to be four. So. Right. But, I'll but look the, it up. I'll, I'll go yeah. find it. The, the question is what? Uh, the question is how many people can be on a subcommittee without without running a a foul of the rules. Right. That's the question. Like, yeah, we talked. Yeah, we talked about yeah. that too in the prior meeting. Yeah. Tom right. knows that off top of his head. But. Okay, we have six minutes before our hard stop. Yes, thank you, Robin. Okay, um, so um, all right, so uh, Jerry, I'm just going to ask that you fill me. If, if assuming the subcommittee is you and Gene, that, that later you fill me in on what happens. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I have no public input on the um, on my email. I'll just double check again. Yeah, no one has emailed me, so um, there's no public input. So all we really need is a next meeting date. Um, and we have to make sure that it's not at a time when North Andover Cam is planning maintenance or there are other meetings being held. Yeah. If so, I can kindly request 5.30, if, if possible, or later, because I had a real hard time getting here today. Yeah, one of the issues um, is that if there's a meeting at 7, then we have to stop at 6.45. That's the reason I wanted to start at 5 o'clock. Um, That's I mean, I can try and make it at 5 yeah. on the days. Tuesdays are going to be bad for me and then there's some Thursdays that might be bad but I'll know that ahead of time I'll have to go because I'm going before school committees all right so um maybe we should look at uh how's Thursday um Thursday November 12th look for people I I can't do Thursdays okay um wednesday wednesday no wednesday won't work for me um it's veterans day anyway uh and you said tuesdays are no good for you gene um yeah tuesdays aren't gonna be good for me what about oh i'm sorry thursdays are good wednesdays are not good i can do thursday the 12th sorry okay. about that all right. Um, I'm just quickly looking to see if I can. I don't know if the town calendar goes out that far. Yeah. In terms of things tentative because I'm 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 going before school committee on one Thursday in November and I don't know which one it is right now. All right. Uh, it's only it's only one out of the four, and it's most definitely not Thanksgiving. So I know that. Yeah, I, I don't see a quick way to check the calendar, the meeting calendar for. Uh, well, let's just let's do the Thursday the twelfth at five thirty, and again if if we have to move it because of Cam or if we have other can't right. make it, then we'll. Yeah, we've done a pretty good job, I think, of kind of adjusting timing on the fly. Yeah. So, or if you want to do five o'clock, and then I'll just if that's not the day I have to go to sports committee, I'll make your own around at a decent time. All right, I'll set it for five o'clock. Okay. Uh, and, and I'll I'll do that. Okay. Um, so yeah. So obviously before that, you have to, um, Joanna, you'll have to meet with Jerry and Jean, and then Jerry, you and I will meet after that. Okay. 
on the on the budget. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Okay. I will. Uh, I'll email you an invite, uh, Gina J, tomorrow. All right. All right. Um, so will someone please make a motion to adjourn? I'll it's make Rob, a motion to it's adjourn. It's Robin's job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will second it. All right. Um, uh, every any well, Dave Brown in favor. Gene. In favor. Robin. Aye. Aye. Jerry. Aye. All right. I did, by the way, hear from, uh, it's approved, by the way, I did hear from Tom that something came up, uh, family obligation, and he couldn't make it. So he yeah, did no it. Worries. He did write to us. So um, good meeting. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Joanna.